Hey guys, hope everyone is having a great day. I've been getting a lot of uh, questions about the home buying process. So people have been reaching out to me saying, hey, I'm just thinking about buying a house or condo or townhouse in the next year or so, maybe two years, and I'm curious about how the whole thing works. And so what I'd love to do is just uh, share that whole process with you real quick. So basically, when we get together for a, a buyer consultation, we'll figure out what type of property that you're looking for. Maybe it's a house, townhouse, condo, whatever part of town it's in, whatever the price range is. Um, if you're looking for a certain amount of bedrooms or, or a backyard or whatever it is, we'll put that criteria together. I will uh, create an auto MLS search to where anytime that a new house comes on the market that matches the criteria, you'll get an, an email automatically. And so we'll go out and we'll start looking at houses and, and uh, typically on average I'd say we look anywhere from six to nine houses before a client writes an offer and uh, we put a house under contract. But I've looked at maybe one or two houses before and somebody went move forward with with writing a contract and I've also looked at like 50 or 60 before and so any anywhere in the in the middle is fine and so when we find the right house you'll definitely know as soon as we walk in we'll we'll both know we'll talk through the criteria and exactly what you're looking for just to make sure that this is exactly the right house that fits what you're looking for and a lot of times I will encourage my clients to go ahead and write the offer right away and it might come off as a little bit pushy but the reason that I do this is the last thing that we want to do is, is miss out on a great house or a great opportunity by thinking about it for a night or sleeping on it and then we come back the next day and it's pending and somebody else already bought it. Um, now here's, here's how it works. The reason that I say that is as soon as we go under contract we'll actually have this thing called a due diligence period where we can cancel the contract for any reason whatsoever and you won't lose anything. So it's always better to go ahead and write that contract, get it under contract, make sure that you like it, and then kind of decide if, if you'd like to keep it or if you want to move forward and look at something else. Um, so we'll write that contract, we'll look at the comps, we'll find out what the fair market value is of the property to make sure we're, we're getting you a good, um, uh, a good deal. And once we go pending, once the contract is officially signed by everybody, there's gonna be a few things that happen simultaneously pretty quickly. So number one, the earnest money deposit will be due. Earnest money is basically a deposit that is held by the closing attorney or a bank, an escrow account, that says we're serious about buying this house. Now, earnest money is usually about 1% of the purchase price. So if a house is $400,000, the earnest money would be about $4,000. That's held by the closing attorney, and later on, it's applied towards your down payment once we get to the closing table. So we're pending, you've turned in this earnest money deposit, there's the first contingency starts and actually there's three, three general contingencies that start at the same time as soon as we go into contract. The first one is called the due diligence period. This is the one that I told you about where, um, where we can actually cancel and back out from this deal for any reason whatsoever without losing your earnest money deposit. Now due diligence periods usually last anywhere from seven to 10 days, sometimes 14 days, but it's much better to keep the, the due diligence period and contingency short because it's more attractive to the seller. It makes our offer stand out better and seem stronger. So I'd recommend doing a seven day due diligence period. During this time, not only will we do our due diligence on the house, some people call it the, the inspection contingency, that's when we'll get the inspection done. Now an inspection usually costs anywhere from four to 500, sometimes even $600 depending on the property and what all needs to be inspected. I would really recommend getting a radon test done. Now radon is a colorless, odorless gas that comes up from the foundation. It actually comes from decomposing granite in the earth and uh, it's, I think it's like the second leading cause, maybe it's the first leading cause of lung cancer right up there with, with smoking. So it's really bad. Um, and so we'll get the inspection done, we'll get this radon test done within that due diligence period and we'll get the results back. It'll probably be a list of like 60 pages of all the things that are wrong with the house and happens every single time, even with brand new houses, with brand new construction. So at this point, we take this report, we take a look at it together, and we will come up with a list of repairs that we would like for the seller to make. Now, we wanna, we wanna ask for things that are 
that are um, kind of more costly, that are more serious. So I would recommend not asking for small things like let's say a light switch cover is cracked and we want it replaced. I'd say just do that stuff on your own, go to Home Depot and just buy your own and, and trade it out over the weekend. I would recommend asking for things like if a water heater doesn't work, we'd ask for the seller to change that out for us. Or if something else major like a, a window is broken, we would ask for the seller to change that out as well. And so we'll come up with this list and we'll put it all together in this thing called an amendment to address concerns and we'll send that off to the seller. At that point they'll probably come back, they'll say we'll do one, two, and three, but we won't do four, five, and six or a combination of, of uh, however we, we negotiate it. And so then we'll come to an agreement on all the repairs that the seller will make and we will be officially out of the due diligence period. Now at this point we're probably about seven days into the contract, maybe ten days into the contract. At this point, we cannot back out for any reason, right? So if we decide to cancel the contract for a reason outside of the appraisal or the financing contingency, then we would be penalized by losing the earnest money, which is something that's never actually happened to me before because we keep a close eye on all these contingencies. And so that's that first contingency that I told you about, the due diligence period. Again, seven days on average. Uh, the next one, and it actually starts at the same time, is called the financing contingency. Now usually these last about 21 days, so three weeks from the start of the contract. The financing contingency, you will be uh, turning in all of your paperwork to the lender. He'll probably be asking you for updated bank statements and pay stubs and tax returns and um, all this stuff, student loans, credit cards, whatever, any kind of debt that you have. Make sure that you turn in all of this stuff as quick as possible to the lender so that he has enough time to order an appraisal. Now that's our third contingency. It also starts at the same time as the other two as soon as we go under contract. Now the appraisal contingency is usually 21 days as well, so about three weeks. And within this time the lender orders uh, a third party company and that third party company orders an appraiser to come out to the property and make sure that the property is worth whatever the contract is that we wrote on the property. Now most of the time the houses will appraise because we'll look at the same comps that an appraiser will look at and so we'll submit an offer that's either at fair market value or a lot of times below fair market value to get you a better deal. But occasionally an appraisal will come in low. So let's say the contract, the house that we're buying is 400000 the appraisal comes in at three ninety. So there's that 10000 difference. This basically tells us that the bank is only willing to lend on uh, a house that's worth 390000 So we need to figure out, okay, what do we do now? So we basically have, have three options that we can go with. Number one, and we'll always do this one first, we will ask for the seller to lower the contract price down to the appraised value. So uh, you would basically be getting an extra $10,000 off the cost of the house. If they decline to do that, uh, we can split the difference. So we'll come up $5,000 out of pocket and they'll come down $5,000 uh, from the contract price. So we'll meet somewhere in the middle. Or the third thing that we can do um, after we've exhausted all the other options is we could cancel the contract without losing the earnest money because we're still within that appraisal contingency period of 21 days. Now, we're uh, once we get through that, we're about three weeks into the contract. We're um, uh, at this point, just about everything is done. We're just basically submitting additional paperwork to the closing attorney and then we usually close in about four weeks. So we have about a week left until the closing. The closing is pretty simple. We'll show up to our closing attorney's office. We'll sit around a big table and uh, eat a bunch of candy and hang out for about an hour and sign a stack of paperwork that seems to be growing every single week. You just sign away for literally like a whole a whole hour. Um, and so after everything's complete, uh, you will get the keys to your brand new house or condo or townhouse and you'll be able to move in that same day. So I, I hope that was helpful. If you guys have any questions about the process, anything specific that you're curious about, reach out to me, send me a message, call me, text me. Would love to help any way that I can.